Hey everybody, Don here again. Well, you guys have probably heard me say this before, but you know, when it comes to deer, every deer I kill is a trophy. You know, whether it's a big one, like the pig, who just happens to be the biggest buck I've ever killed, or this one here, which was the first racked buck I ever killed, every deer is a trophy. Let me show you how I honor and memorialize the deer that I've taken over the years. So here are a couple of deer that I, uh, I did skull mounts on. This one here was the uh, first deer I shot at my buddy Brett's place in Missouri. I think that was 2017, uh, 2018, no, 2017. This was a buck I got in New Brunswick. And they're both beautiful bucks and I decided to do skull mounts. But far and away, the majority of the deer I've taken are like these guys. You know, they're not big bucks. You know, six pointer, seven pointer, four pointer, eight pointer, eight pointer, you know. None of them are really big bucks but every one of them is a trophy in my eyes and so I treat them as such. And what I like to do is I like to cut the skull cap so you get a pretty nice big plate and then I you know write something about the deer. Let's, let's look at some of these. 2004 the top of the hill buck. 2005 that one's extra special. I missed Thanksgiving with my in-laws, but they still love me, Buck. Uh, this one was the Tanglefoot Stomper from 2003. Uh, here, 2015, if only I had been in my bow stand, Buck. This one, the Anacosti Buck, avec Louis Martin et Pierre et Tabler, the guys that I went there with, 2003. This was the drought breaker buck. And that was another Thanksgiving Day buck. And this one, this was my first buck with a bow. Pretty special. You know, like I said, I mean, every buck is special. Even, even this one. <laughs> that was the very first deer I ever shot. A little spike and a half. So I like to honor every buck that I shoot, just so I'll re always remember the day. Now I'm going to go out to the garage and I'm going to take the skull plate off of the buck I shot in Missouri this year and prep it for a plaque. Come on along. When I was in Missouri and I was coming home, I had to make sure I got all the brain tissue out of here and all the... Uh, uh, the meat. So basically I just skinned this skull out, took the brains out, wrapped it in a plastic bag, and then wrapped it up with some tape. It's uh, <laughs> probably going to stink. Alright, so what I have here is calcium carbonate. And this is, uh, you use this and it helps get the meat tissue off the bone a lot easier. There's not much on there. So I'm just going to use about half a cup, maybe a little bit more. It's in the heart. You mix that in with your water, and I guarantee you it makes the, uh, the stuff come off the skull a lot, a lot easier. Peeling right off the bone. A little while longer. Now, while I'm doing that, I was gonna cook up some lunch. You know, I honor my deer by making a plaque for the rack and then putting a little something about when and where I shot it. Something special, I give it a name. But the main way we, uh, we honor our deer is by consuming it. Let's go ahead and throw a 
couple of those patties in there. The lid on that. Mustard's all you need. Y'all know I love to cook outside, <laughs> even if it's out in the garage. You can see most of that cartilage and whatnot has uh, gelled up. You can probably pick a lot of it right off with a knife. Yep. And then what I do, this bone should come right out, this nasal bone, and it leaves kind of a W looking mark here. That's what I, uh, that's what I want to get. Oh, there we go. See that pulled right out? Yep, there's the other one. All right, and then see what you're left with. This is kind of a sharp W. So it looks like there's still a little fat in the bone. I might not have used quite enough um, calcium carbonate. The only problem with that is that when you write on it with ink, Eventually the fat will leach out and you're using a sharpie. It'll fade a lot of my older ones. They faded like that, but This is gonna do it All right, well, it's the next day and I uh, put the skull after I was done boiling down here by the wood stove Hello puppy You don't look real comfortable Oh, Let's see Oh, Look at that that dried up really nice and whitened up really good too. I don't think I'm going to peroxide it. Yeah, looking good. So what I've got is a bunch of these plaques. Um, I came up with this design. It's, uh, it's a little different than most plaques I've seen. And I had my stepdad cut me out a whole bunch of these before he passed away so there's solid oak and um, you know what I like to do is I have um, you know for any gun killed buck I use this uh, green stain and then I have some uh, metallic leafing it's uh, gold uh, gold leafing that I do the edge with So the stain is dried. And now I'm just going to put the uh, the gold paint all the way around the edge. Just really to kind of dress it up, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, gives it a little class maybe. Is that what I want to say? Now over to the skull plate. Well, you can see that just came out really nice. I'm not going to, usually I peroxide it, but I'm not going to uh, this time around. You can see there's a tiny bit of fat left in that slight, slight discoloration, but that's good. So now what I got to do, I'm going to cut out a piece of plywood that it's about the size of that brain cavity. And then I'll pack this with um, newspaper, wet newspaper, and then I'll glue this piece of um, plywood in there with some Gorilla Glue, which will expand and it will fill the gap. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of paper and with a pencil just kind of trace along the inside of the brain cavity. Then I'll go cut a piece of plywood. I got this, I don't know, it's 3 8 plywood. I've already cut one from last year. I'll cut this piece out and, uh, and then kind of fine tune it to fit in that skull cavity. Alright, I need to trim this just a little bit here. And then it'll fit right in there. And once I glue it in, then I can put my screws through the back of the plaque right into that. Perfect. All right, so I took some newspaper and I wet it down really good. And I'm gonna fill in this, uh, this brain cavity. I do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't want any of the glue to leak down through the, the skull. There's a couple of little vents. And number two is that the Gorilla Glue that I use um, works when items are wet. All right, so now let me just make sure I got this piece going the right way. I'll put that in there. I'm gonna put just a little bit of this glue In there, in there, and in there. And I will let that stuff go to work. It will expand. It'll take a little while, but it will expand and it'll fill that brain cavity up and it'll attach that plate good and solid inside the, uh, inside the skull cap. All right, so you can see the plaque came out really nice. The green stain and the gold, uh, the gold trim around the edge and the piece of plywood glued in great this is rock solid so now what I'll be able to do which I've already drilled a couple holes put that where it needs to be located and then drill it in from the back so we'll have a nice clean surface to write on and I'll write something on here 2020 I'm sure it'll say something about being the uh, the river bottom buck out of Missouri. So came out pretty, pretty, pretty nice. So there it is, folks. The little river buck, 2020, Missouri. Now it'll take its place of honor up on the wall with all the others. Peace.